Welcome to Math with Mr. J. In this video, I'm going to cover what unit fractions are. We will go through some examples together, and then we will end with some practice problems. Now remember, when it comes to fractions, a whole is divided into equal parts. Each one of those equal parts is what we call a unit fraction. So one equal part of a whole is a unit fraction. And unit fractions have a numerator, so top number, of one. Understanding unit fractions helps our overall understanding of fractions and helps us when working with fractions. So let's jump into our examples here, starting with number one, where we need to write the unit fraction that represents each equal part of the whole. So the first thing that we need to do is figure out how many equal parts the whole, the whole circle, has been divided into. Well, one, two, three equal parts. So each one of those equal parts is what fraction of the whole? Well, since we have three total equal parts, the denominator is going to be three. So denominator is going to be three. And then as far as the numerator, each equal part is one out of the three total equal parts. So our numerator is one. So this equal part is one third of the whole circle. This equal part is one third of the whole circle. And this equal part is one third of the whole circle. So the unit fraction that represents each equal part of the whole here is one third. Let's move on to number two. So what unit fraction represents each equal part of the whole? Well, we have one, two, three, four equal parts. The whole square has been divided into four equal parts. So four is going to be our denominator. And then each equal part is one out of the four total equal parts. So this is one fourth of the whole, one equal part out of the four total equal parts. This is one fourth of the whole, this is one fourth of the whole, and this is one fourth of the whole. So one fourth is the unit fraction that represents each equal part of the whole. Let's move on to number three. So we will start by seeing how many equal parts the whole has been divided into. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight equal parts. So each equal part is one out of eight total equal parts. So our unit fraction here is one eighth. This equal part is one eighth of the whole. This is one eighth of the whole. This is one eighth. 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 And this is one eighth. So one eighth is the unit fraction that represents each equal part of the whole. Moving on to number four. Let's see how many equal parts this whole rectangle has been divided into. One, two, three, four, five. So each equal part is one out of five total equal parts. Our unit fraction here is one fifth. So this is one fifth of the whole. This is one fifth. This is one fifth. This is one fifth. And this is one fifth. So one fifth is the unit fraction that represents each equal part of the whole. Let's move on to numbers five through eight. Here are numbers five through eight. And for these, we're going to write what fraction, and these will all be unit fractions, of each shape is shaded. Let's start with number five. The whole, the whole circle, has been divided into two equal parts. One, two. So our denominator is two. Now one of the two equal parts is shaded. So our numerator is one. Our unit fraction is one 
half. Moving on to number six, the whole has been divided into one, two, three, four, five, six equal parts. So six is our denominator. One of the equal parts is shaded, so one is our numerator. Our unit fraction here, one sixth. Now before moving on to number seven, I want us to take a look at something that's going to help our understanding of unit fractions. For numbers five and six, that whole circle is the exact same size. So going off of that, which unit fraction do you think is greater? Do you think is larger? One half or one sixth? And we can just look at which shaded part is larger. Well, one half. And we can think of these two circles like two pizzas that are the same size. Is one half of the pizza more or is one sixth of the pizza more? Well, we can see that one half is more. So one thing I want us to think about and keep in mind when it comes to unit fractions, the larger the denominator is, the smaller the parts will be. And we can also think the smaller the denominator, the larger the parts will be, which kind of sounds like it doesn't make sense. So why would it be that the larger the denominator, the smaller the parts, or the smaller the denominator, the larger the parts? Well, think about it. The larger the denominator, that means the whole is being divided into more equal parts. And the more parts we have, the smaller they are going to be. Like one sixth right here compared to one half. And speaking of one half, the smaller the denominator, the less parts the whole is divided into. So the parts are larger, like right here. Now the focus of this video isn't comparing unit fractions. We will get more into that in another video. But I at least wanted to mention this, so something to think about. Let's move on to number seven. The whole rectangle has been divided into one, two, three, four, five, six, seven equal parts. So our denominator is seven. And then we have one of the equal parts shaded in. So our unit fraction here, one seventh. Moving on to number eight, the whole has been divided into one, two, three, four equal parts. So four is our denominator, and then one equal part is shaded in, so our numerator is one. Our unit fraction for number eight, one fourth. Now for number seven and eight, those rectangles are the same size. So if we were to compare those unit fractions, which is greater, one seventh or one fourth? Well, we can see that one fourth is greater. That's a larger shaded part. But also we can look at the denominators when it comes to unit fractions. Whichever denominator is less, that will be the greater unit fraction. Four is less than seven. So one fourth is greater than one seventh. And think about it, for one fourth, that rectangle was only divided into four parts. So those parts are larger compared to one seventh which was divided into seven parts. So that will make those parts smaller. So now that we've gone through some examples together, it's time for you to try some practice problems on your own. So have paper and a pencil ready. Here are your practice problems. Write the unit fraction that represents each equal part of the whole. For example, that green square each equal part is one half of the whole. So our unit fraction that represents each equal part is one half. I'll give you two minutes and then we will go over the answers. Go ahead and start. Thank you. 
Okay, so that's two minutes. Let's take a look at the answers. For number one, each equal part is one-sixth of the whole. For number two, each equal part is one-fourth of the whole. For number three, each equal part is one-tenth of the whole. For number four, each equal part is one-seventh of the whole. And then lastly, for number five, each equal part is one-ninth of the whole. So there you have it. There's what unit fractions are. I hope that helped. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, peace.